question? Mm -hmm. I'd like you to take some time and talk about your equipment, how it's set up, how well, you run your guitars. Okay, um, the setup that I'm using is kind of the latest incarnation of something which has evolved. It's been evolving over a long period of time. Basically, my setup is um, basically a two guitar setup. And I use the two guitars. The reason that I use two guitars is um, one reason is that I can do, a, do my effects differently. So I can do effects differently. If I was playing solo and I put a wah-wah on my guitar, it's going to change the whole guitar. It's not, it's not bad, but it's just here I got my rock solid anchor. Then on top of that I can go. You know, I can do stuff like that. Or like I can do maybe one I want to have it distorted. I've got my chords down here and I don't want to distort that. So I keep it like that. Or I might put a little distortion on it, but I can fade it in so it's not overpowering. But then this one is fully distorted. So what I basically, <laughs> basically I'm set up for maximum parallelism. So I can, got, I can do the two guitars, like for example, I've got this guitar, just a direct dry signal, just going right into my mixer. That's always there, it always sounds like that. Then I've got, these two pedals control the affected guitar. It's a parallel circuit, it branches off. One is the direct, the other passes through the Korg A2. And the, this pedal controls the, what the A2 is doing. For example, here I have the volume of the A2. It's all off now, you won't hear anything. I can turn up the regular guitar. I can turn up the A2. Oops. Okay, there. These two pedals are interdependent in different ways. With these, um, RFC1 MIDI mitigator, I'm just sending program changes. And I can change the programs on my core gate too. Right now it's at a clean setting, so it's gonna sound the same as the In fact that's one of the ways we calibrate. I make sure that this sounds the same. But it's really two different circuits. If I change the A2, I might put up this program so the A2 now sounds like this. The dry signal is still dry, but now the effect has like this. So now I can cross fade between the two. I can blend it. I can have a basically dry signal, but put just a little, just a little bit of the other thing in there if I want to just have it subtle, you know? So it's not like, you know, a switch where you just bam, you know, run your whole thing to an effect. I can make it more subtle and I can fade between the different effects. Or if I want to put a wah-wah on it, this controls the volume and this controls the wah. So what I might do is I might decide to play like this and have just, just a touch of wah wah. It's subtle, but it's there, you know. Um, another thing that I might decide, and also I have the distortion here. If I have the same distortion on the other side, so I can do stuff like, you know. So, you know, that gives you a whole nother effect with the two distortions, like twin leads, you know. Um, so, or I can do like twin wah-wahs, and that gives you a nice kind of fading effect that you can do. Or you can go like stuff like... Um, and also, just having the volume pedals allows you to do things like... Um,
know, stuff like that. Now this guitar, it's uh, kind of a modified or expanded Casio PG380, and it has a built-in synthesizer. So I can fade up the yellow pedal and I have synth. <laughs> So anyway, um, I got that and I can change my programs here. And I can blend that with guitar. And I can, uh, here's a blend that I particularly like. Another blend that's particularly kind of hip. Which sounds good going along with distortion. Ah. Because I get a nice bass response down there. you can switch your hands around and stuff too. And now uh, over here I've got the uh, super duper keyboard thing which I'm still learning how to play. <laughs> and uh, it's got some wonderful things you can do. I can go over here. This controls my Korg A2 in the same way that the other one does. But I also have some settings here where I can use it to change the sound on my wave station because I'm sending out program changes. So I can get some nice... <laughs> to go back over here and play. Um, got some nice pads set up. I can go over to my pad section. Because I have the volume pedals, I'm basically mixing while I'm playing. And that gives me really, you know, a lot more subtlety. And plus I have the parallelism. And what the parallelism allows me to do basically is uh, while, while I'm using one set of sounds, I can be setting up some other sounds. And then when I got it just what I want, then I switch over to it. And then I got some other sounds. And then while I'm using those other sounds, I can be setting up the other thing again. And then I can, when I get that ready, I go to that. So it allows me to continuously go from one thing to another, you know, and I can just keep on going. And it allows me to create new combinations of sounds that I didn't have to um, work it all out before. It can be spontaneous. Because that's because I'm kind of in two schools in a way, because I come from the old school, basically the jazz conservative school of just basically, you know, well, I don't, it's not that it's conservative. What it is is actually it's the opposite. It's spontaneous. But I'm saying it's conservative because it's the way that people played before in the music is where you would just go out there and you would let the music flow and you'd, you'd improvise and be spontaneous. Well, nowadays, you know, the equipment is so complicated, people have to sit there and work out all their programs in advance. And then they get up there on stage and it's like, you might as well just play a tape because it's the same way every time. And I, I'm kind of in both schools at the same time. So what I'm trying to do 
is still deal with the, the new range of sounds and timbres that we have with electronic instruments, but still be able to improvise just like the jazz cats always did. So that's kind of what I'm, what I'm trying to develop. And this, uh, this definitely takes me in that direction. I mean, when I start doing my shows, sometimes I get inspired and I just go, and I just go, and I start discovering all these new sound combinations. And so I'm not just composing on the level of harmony, melody, rhythm, and texture, but also the timbre and the orchestration of the timbres. Mm -hmm. Another question?